thanks to a new RAW engine in Camera Raw version 6, shipping with Photoshop CS5. You can take your old files and update them and enjoy better color, tone, sharpening, noise reduction, and new effects like additive grain and vignetting. This particular image, let's pop over to our new effects panel and add some grain. This could be used to mimic a film aesthetic or to introduce consistency in images that have a varied ISO. I can go from small grain to large grain, and as you see, I now have new options for post-crop vignetting to have even more control over my exposure. We have support for nearly 300 proprietary RAW formats, JPEGs, and TIFFs as well, and of course, maintain feature parity with Lightroom 3's develop module so that files can be passed back and forth with the same control. Let's take a look at some of the significant changes to lens correction in Photoshop CS5. First, let's look at just some of the mini JDI or Just Do It features that complemented lens correction. We moved the lens correction dialog directly under the filter menu so it's easier to find. We've changed reset behavior. We've given more control for chromatic aberration. We've allowed better control of the grid, the size of the grid, the color of the grid. But the most powerful thing about lens correction is that it's now completely automated. If I take this image and pull it in here, we're able to look at the EXIF data, Nikon D3, 16mm lens at f2.8, and automatically remove geometric distortion and chromatic aberration. We'll ship with a variety of different profiles for popular lenses, but you'll also be able to go online and find those uh, other ones out there, search for different profiles, search for different variations of the same profile, or go ahead and customize this and save that as your own. A lot of control, a lot of minor changes. We've really streamlined uh, a big feature here, lens correction with CS5. Photographers and retouchers have enjoyed the healing brush and the spot healing brush in Photoshop since version 7. This remarkable tool allows us to take a lot of things out of our images very quickly and easily, but one thing it has a tough time with is lines and the edges of images. Well, a new feature in Photoshop CS5 is a default algorithm called Content Aware that will allow me to take this same line, that was very difficult before, and quickly and easily remove that from my image by taking a better look at what's around the pixels. And you'll see here quickly, we're able to fill in content, uh, tone, and texture in a much more accurate way. This will also work much better on the edges of images. One of the most powerful features in Photoshop CS5 is a tool called Content Aware Fill. Let's go ahead and load a selection. And what we want to do is remove this person from the image and build a wall behind him. Now, if we were to do this previously, it would take a very long time to clone and heal this. And while we have a new Content Aware option with our Spot Healing Brush, that would also take quite a little while. But if I hit my Delete key, I'll be prompted with a new Fill dialog that has a Content Aware option. If I click OK, Photoshop will intelligently look at the data all around this gentleman here and replace him with the wall behind him. So we'll synthesize a wall as we go quickly and easily removing objects. This can be used for photographers and retouching, uh, for removing objects from images, for healing, uh, for uh, restoring photographs, all sorts of things. Let's take a look at HDR Pro in Photoshop CS5. You see I can drive it directly out of MiniBridge, right from within the panel here. I've downsampled these files so that we can move a little bit faster. But what you'll see as we pop into the feature is an entirely new dialog it's easier to use and more powerful than ever before. We'll give you tone mapped results immediately. Here you see our three images that we've selected. And while I have new controls for edge glow, gamma, detail, and everything is laid out right here before me, I can also choose from a preset that I've made before. With my image looking good, now I just need to get rid of all of that ghosting and moving content in the image. And this is a problem with HDR photography. I've got a new checkbox there remove ghosts. Photoshop's going to look at each image and I'm actually going to override this selection and tell it to use this middle image and there we have a really nice stabilized crisp clean saturated image high dynamic range I've got lots of shadow and highlight detail really quick really easy really powerful I can make any changes I like here uh, and I can save those as presets of course we can do black and whites surreal photorealistic really anything we want the new Merge to HDR Pro feature in Photoshop CS5 is really powerful if you have multiple images. But what if you just have a single image and you want to emulate that HDR look or introduce some new controls not found in prior versions? Brand new to Photoshop CS5 is a feature called HDR Toning. We're going to take our single image here, 
and we see the same familiar controls that we found in Merged HDR Pro. Within here, I can adjust gamma, radius, I get a tone mapped result, detail. As you'll see, I've got a couple of single image presets that I've made. High contrast black and white, a very crunchy, a high contrast aesthetic here, a softer, more painterly image. And I can do creative things like desaturate while using vibrance here. I can quickly and easily mimic not just an HDR effect, but get some controls that I wouldn't have had prior in Photoshop. And we think that professional photographers and amateurs are really going to enjoy this feature. To appreciate the changes we've done to selections in Photoshop CS5, I've opened two images. One, the source image on the right, and two, the image on the left that shows the best mask that I was able to create prior to this version of Photoshop. With the image on the right selected, I'm going to load the same selection that we used for the image on the left. Now we're going to come into Refine Edge, which has been completely redesigned. And let's switch our view. You notice that our view uses our actual image. We want to see this in black and white. And with two clicks, we're going to render a much, much better mask. Now mind you, this is a low resolution file with hair. It's a very difficult selection. But by simply boosting the radius of our selection, and choosing Smart Radius, which will look around the edge of the image, and it knows the difference between a hard edge and a soft edge, we're immediately able to get a much, much finer detailed mask. Now, I've got a new tool here that allows me to touch up the edges of my mask simply by dragging along the edge. I'm option clicking to remove hair, and then over here I know there's a whisker. I just paint that in, and it pops right back into the image. With a few clicks of my mouse, I've gotten a very, very powerful mask for a very difficult sort of image. Low resolution, lots of hair, soft edge, and a hard edge. Very quick, very easy.